Well, it certainly was a bitter pill to swallow for the Swans. Twice runners up in three years, and according to Josh Kennedy, the inaugural Gary Ayres medalist, this one was more painful than the first two years ago. So the question now remains, where to for the Sydney Swans? Jake Nile joins us to update us on all things in footy. And Jake, I think uh, there's obvious absolute devastation, disappointment for the Sydney Swans having lost, but it's got to be held in context of a side that had the introduction of seven first-year players and went into a flag, albeit against a young side, but uh, with so many youngsters themselves. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they had a profile of a team that you wouldn't see in a grand final normally with the, the, you know, the youth of those players and the, the seven under 50 and the seven debutants in a season was another factor. They had, Jared. they reviewed the game today, the Swans yep. coaches, and I think the feeling was that simply in the actual grand final, they did not have the even spread of contributors. And that's what John Longmire said. The review of the game completely backed that up. So they're not making excuses at all. They paid tribute to the Bulldogs. They thought they were just outstanding and they played the best month of football in, I think the comment to me was in 120 years. Well, let's remind ourselves of what John Longmire said straight after the match. I think we, we weren't quite up to the work rate that we normally get uh, from our group. Over a con and and uh, the, probably the Bulldogs' consistency over their 22 versus ours, so we didn't have as, probably as many contributors on the day, which you need to have that if... Um, if you're going to be victorious. To say you get to a grand final, I think that a lot of people might have been a bit surprised about that. Once you get here, you need to, to make the most of op every opportunity you get, and it's so hard to get to, let alone win, that yeah, I thought that last couple of weeks we've had some extreme efforts and an even contribution, it didn't happen today. Such a different game to the free-flowing ball that the Swans are able to get in that uh, prelim final against Geelong. There was no connection between the back half and the forward half, uh, David. Their midfield got plenty of numbers, but no free ball into that forward line. Forward line didn't really work, did it, boys? It didn't function. They couldn't get a connector through that centre-half forward area. And, and their forward six, with the exception probably of Franklin there at times, really struggled to have any involvement at all. Yeah, it did. Well, Tipper just couldn't, couldn't catch yep. a cold, really. I, I know he's probably hampered by the fact he had to play a bit more centre-half forward as soon as Buddy got injured. Um, you know, so that's what it looked like. Did Buddy get a needle? When he went off earlier. Yeah, I believe game. he did get a jab, from what I can gather. But th they said he's fine. I felt, looking at it, his mobility was just a little bit down. But the Swans were saying he was pretty good. And uh, just the incident there. there's no ramifications coming out of that because I wondered if he'd had a syndesmosis injury. You know, but, but They're no. pretty painful, those uh, medial ligament uh, sprains on the ankle. But as uh, the doctors would have been able to do, they would have killed uh, most of the pain. He's freed himself up enough when... The ball in hand. He battled along pretty hard, but uh, yeah. every time he had the ball, he seemed to be jumped on by lots of players. In fact, he was pretty vocal off the ball as well. He, he looked frustrated with some of his teammates, and I can understand why. Just that the suffocation of the Swans' midfield and the lack of penetration off the half back line just prevented any fast ball into the forward line. So just, just, just what the Swans thought of it too was that that. The Bulldogs did a great job of smothering Franklin with numbers. Mm. So he just didn't get, quite aside from whatever the, his injury, that he was jumped on, as you put it, from very early in the game. And how many times can you remember dead set one-on-ones? Yeah, no, they played pretty aggressively from the start, mm. didn't they, King? Like, mm. Even Hamling, who's an inexperienced defender, they were happy to play out in front of Franklin. The whole defence was very aggressive. So Sydney, when they exited the stoppages, would have seen a lot of Bulldogs jumpers. Were you surprised, Kingy, that the Swans didn't, change direction as much as they did? Uh, well, it's a good question, and we do have some vision of that. that they mm. basically went down the line. I know mean, they're a go-forward team, Sydney. We, we know that. We appreciate how they are going to play. And we know the profile of these teams coming in. But they had opportunity, Jared, and we've got some vision just to highlight that they had chances, I think, to go round the horseshoe. We see Hawthorne do this mm. quite regularly, mm. Jason, and they decided that going down the line and taking that, that territory was probably their better option. They had a lot of opportunities to change direction and that is the one thing you need to do to create space to open up the, the, the ground ahead of you and they didn't do it on too many opportunities and as soon as they got caught mm. into kicking down the line all the time, they were always going to be in trouble, Jared. One of the things I wanted to ask you, we spoke only last week <coughs> about the fact that they were missing the 50 metre penalties for uh, encroaching yep. in the space around the bloke with the ball. I reckon another rule got lost on the weekend, didn't it? The slide it? tackle. Oh, please. Look, I think John Longmire was absolutely on the money. You don't mention free kicks at all, but this has <coughs> to change for the game and the uh, footballing community as a whole. You can't have blokes whose careers may be threatened 
by umpires not being absolutely oh. red hot on this issue. And it's something that has to change in the off season. They've cracked down on it to a degree, and yet uh, they lost their absolute focus on it, and it nearly cost Dan Hanbury his season next year and potentially a career threatening injury. Yes. Yeah. Luckily, Jared, he's only got the medial yeah. ligament and some bone bruising. Uh, they did the test. They actually felt the injury was similar to Aaliyah Aaliyah's. Uh, if anything, Aaliyah's was slightly worse. I think when you look back at the Western Bulldogs season, the biggest change that they've inflicted mm. on the competition, they're going to force a new standard yep. with handballing. I mean, you, you can make what you want of it and people will say, oh, it's too fast, it's too this, it's too that. They train for this relentlessly and you see it of a weekend. I mean, they average 200 a weekend, which is the most of any club. But this is separating games. There'll be 17 other clubs now playing handball games at training, Kim, yep. because that's all they did for the entire pre-season, apparently. Well, their ability to win contested footy was, was clearly uh, the best in the competition, but some of these handballs are so creative. Questionable. Well, <laughs> they, they probably are, but they, they oh. follow through with the fist, and it, it'd be a brave umpire to take the ball off yeah. them. You know, it'd be a brave umpire to pay, pay a free kick. I mean, that's half a throw, but, <laughs> you know, it's so quick and so effective, it's fantastic. And yeah. it's built off the back of their contested possession game. Second best team, sorry, second best team ever recorded behind the West Coast Eagles of 2006. Mm. And if you go back to 2006, that was Judd, Kerr and Cousins, a pretty handy trio. Mm. The dogs don't, the dogs only have one player in the top 30 in the competition for contested possessions, and that's the Bont. That's so amazing. So it just shows the mm. spread. Collective just, effort. I know you're saying, Jared, it's the uh, collective, it's not the sum of its parts. Yes, that's exactly. The whole is uh, greater than the sum of its parts. Um, there's a good word that describes that, David. Uh, David uh, we'll bring that up down the track. Tom Mitchell, is he going to... Uh